So if you notice, the next meter we're going to do is elegiac couplets. There are two different scansions for two different types of lines. So the reason it's called a couplet is because the poem is broken into two lined sections. So we're going to start with 85. 85 is only two lines long. The first line is called the hexameter. Hex comes from the Greek word six. So there are six feet in a hexameter line. Pentameter comes from the word pent, penta, prefix, which means five. Both of those are Greek words. So a pentameter has five syllables. So let me explain a little bit about the first hexameter, and then I'll do the pentameter a little bit later. So for elegiac couplets, it's not as defined. If you notice, there are a couple places where you have to decide what the meter is. The first three feet can be whatever under the blue moon it needs to be. However, unlike a hendecasyllabic where a foot could be long, short as a single foot, elegiac couplets actually can't do that in hexameter. So your feet options are long, long, or long, short, short. It can only be a dactyl or a spondy, which you've heard those words before. Uh, so we can only have those options. The only thing really new is that double slash. It's called a kaisera. So if you notice in the third foot, in between the long and the two shorts, and the long and the long, you know what it would be, there is a double backslash. It's called a kaisera. It marks the break, the exact middle of the metrical foot. Break. It marks the exact middle of the line, not break. It marks the poetic center of that line. So the kaisera is necessary and shows you almost where the emphasis is in two sections of the line, minus one. So we need to have that in there. And it's always going to break up the third foot. So I find it easiest with elegiac couplets to actually start at the end. So the last syllable can either be long or short, depending on what it actually is, and I think by now you know that. But the last foot is long, long, or long, short. Break. The next one before that is long, short, short, break. And now you have two of the six feet done, and can actually just figure out four feet instead of six. So now you can start at the beginning, or start keep going at the end, or whatever DD is for you. Um, so the first thing you would do is long by position. There are a couple elisions we have to note. Um, o, D, et, amo. So the I and the E are both vowels. And O, D, et said so the O, det. And you have to mark that. The other one is quareid, quareid. So you'd have to mark the E and the I. Things to note. The O and AMO, even though the QU comes after it, and you would think the U is a vowel, it's actually not. QU together makes one consonant. So a U when it's a QU is not a vowel. Just to make that clear. QU makes one sound, therefore it is one consonant. That's kind of a good rule of thumb with Latin too. That's the reason that L's and R's are liquids, because for a Roman, if it's making one sound like the word train, T-R in that, is actually one sound. So it's a little bit different than we think about it as two consonants. It's, it's one sound. Keeping up with long by position, though, sorry to derail a little, is, is we're going on. The I and id is long by position because it has a D and an F following it. So you would mark the I. The A in Fakiam, the second A, is also long by position because it is followed by an M and an F. 
going on from there, let's say you don't have access to looking up the long by natures. Something you can do, which I think helps, is going logically. So we know that A, that last A, is long, and we only have one more vowel after it, and it's an O, the fortasse part. So it actually has to be long, even though it has an RT after it, after it which makes it long by position, it actually would have to be long on its own just by the actual nature of having that A there. Um, from there, you have a long marked id with a fakion next to it that you don't know the A or the I, and you would have the amo, the O done. Um, going back to the beginning, you know the first vowel in a foot has to be long, so the O and OD has to be long. And then you can count how many syllables you actually have left to do and do a little math, which I know is never fun. So let's count how many vowels we have. Right. Odette is two because it's the O and then the elided IE. Amo is two. Quared. Quared is elided. So that's two. And then Fakniam. We are not going to do the A. So that's two more. So we have eight syllables. And we only have three feet. So if we're doing that math, um, and we can only put things into twos or threes, and we need three left, the logical answer is there's going to be two of the three. So there are going to be two dactyls and one spondy. So one that's double long and two that are long, short, short. So if we're looking through that, um, just to let you know, if you do look up the long by nature, the quare, the a and quare is long by nature. And so that is one I would probably give you. So it would be, that's your other long there. So it would be filling in the rest, long, short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, long. which I think you can see is, is very rhythmic. Um, with the Kaisera, we have to add the Kaisera in there. So it goes in between, so you find the third foot, and it goes in between first long mark. So it would be after the id, and then the Fakiyam would be the second part. The Fakiyam for Tase Recruiteris would be the second half of the line. Now onto the pentameter line. So this one can get a little bit tricky, so we're gonna take this a little bit slow. The pentameter line is five feet. Pent penta, we talked about this. So the thing you have to remember about a pentameter line is it's actually two and a half plus two and a half feet, rather than thinking about it as five. I know that's a little bit weird, but I'll explain that in a second. So if you notice, there are a couple irregularities with this line as opposed to the first line. So we have the long, short, short, long, short, short, and then we have just this random long in there. You notice it's right before the Kaisera. That is the half I'm talking about. And the last half is going to be the very, very last syllable, the excruci or. So that's what makes it the half. So if you notice there are four full feet that are together and then two halves that are separate. Again, I find this is really, really so much easier to do if you start at the end. Those first two feet are the only things you actually have to figure out. And then the very, very last syllable. So if you start at the end, excruci or. That last syllable, as I think you know by now, can be long or short, just depending on what it is. In this case, it's short. Keep going backwards, you always have to have long, short, short. Going backwards from that, it always has to be long, short, short. Then you have a Kaisera. Then it always has to be long with a break. And that's your other half. And then you count how many syllables you have left and fill in the blank. Usually it's either a long, long, or a long, short, short, or whatever it is. But it has to be as many syllables that are there. So in this case, we had six syllables, so it had to be long, short, short, long, short, short. Filling in 
you know, things like elisions. Make sure you always have your elisions done before you start doing the scansion because it can mess up your counting. But other than that, that line is actually pretty easy. So if you start at the end, it's not that bad. Hopefully this helps make scansion and poetry a little bit easier. Let me know if you have any questions.